Hi, I'm Randy Altman with Post Perspective. We're here at NEV 2015, and my guest at the moment is Simon Robinson from the Foundry. And um, you guys have a lot going on at the booth. Do you want to do you want to start with um, Nuke Studio and some of the new things that are coming down the, the road? Yeah. So we've been uh, showing a tech preview of some new features coming to Nuke Studio later in the year. Um, there's no committed release date for it, but sort of stuff we're fairly confident about. So we're showing improvements to editorial functionality. We're showing a lot of improvement um, in audio functionality. And also, we've introduced uh, stereo support to the product. So a whole bunch of features. I mean, it's a lot more detail than that, but a whole bunch of features that people have been really asking for. So that'll be an intermediate release for Nuke Studio later in the year. And Nuke Studio was introduced last year? Yeah, I mean, I think the actual commercial release was only about six months ago. And we've had amazing take up and no end of stuff to now implement. So we're just cracking on with it. Now, and also, so while we're on the Nuke subject, um, you're offering a non-commercial free Nuke. Yeah, that's right. So um, we have for ages had this um, this learning edition of Nuke, which was watermarked. And um, we thought it was kind of time to do a non-watermarked version. So it's a version out there. It's free to use as long as you're not using it for commercial projects. So a great learning tool, mm -hmm. a great way for uh, amateur enthusiasts who aren't doing this kind of stuff commercially to pick up a tool like Nuke and really use it. And is it... Uh Obviously, the two other is there are there less things within that offering than there would be. So yeah, there are there like are there are a few restrictions, okay. um, but um, overall, pretty much most of what we do is in there. Um, and uh, speaking from my own experience, it's the kind of thing if I was doing my own indie film work, it's about the level of uh, stuff which I think would be brilliant. Okay. So we had like great take up the last 24 hours since we announced yesterday. Okay, well, and then get back, getting back to um, new studio, when do you think the additions of the edit, the um, edit audio and stereo? Yeah, stuff so be? we're saying later in the year because okay. we've learned a long time ago never to commit to a date. Yes. Um, because invariably you can never quite hit it. Yeah. But we're, we're pretty stuff we're pretty confident about, so we just need to keep working on it. But it would, should come out as an intermediate release later in the year. Okay, and then what, what about your other tools? What about Mari and? Um, Yes, yeah, so we've been showing bits and pieces and all of those, but there's no real major news on the, on those for this show. So we're hoping to kind of like break out news on those uh, later in the year. Okay, and maybe for people that might not know, um, do you want to just name the other products that you guys offer? Yeah, so um, we, um, I guess what we've been trying to do over a long time now is produce um, a whole set of tools for pretty much an entire post-production pipeline. So we have a tool for storyboarding at the front end called Flix. Um, we have Modo for um, modeling, animation, rigging, rendering. Um, we have Nuke for doing compositing. We have Mari for doing texture painting. We have uh, Katana for doing uh, complex scene aggregation, look development and lighting. Um, and clearly we have a, also got a great rendering resource out of the Modo renderer. And um, doing a lot more um, editorial functionality and fin finishing functionality through Nuke as well. So, um, and there's a few other bits and pieces in there, but that's kind of like a broad range of what we're doing. And hopefully seeing more releases on most of those products through this year. Okay, fantastic. Um, I also noticed that you guys have been talking about virtual reality and augmented reality. Can you get into that a little bit? Why is that important? Yeah, so, um, I mean, it's huge fun for a start, which is, I'm slightly biased towards it because it is huge fun. Um, so there are, um, there are there, there's so many varieties of what people are working on in terms of content, which is augmented reality or virtual reality, um, uh, which is all created in different ways or captured in different ways and viewed in different ways for different audiences. So it's a bit of a minefield out there. Um, the one thing that we've picked up on is um, the, the growing number of people who are doing what is loosely termed omnidirectional stereo. So this is where you have a ball of cameras all facing outwards and you do in a continuous take capturing using maybe 12 or 20 or 24 cameras um, the entire scene at once. And this allows you to produce content which you can then later view in something like an Oculus Rift. And it's incredible when you look into it how many people have started to produce this kind of content. And it throws up huge challenges, um, not only in um, 
in, in traditional storytelling. So what am I going to capture? What story am I telling? Who wants to watch it? What are they going to watch it on? And um, for us, there's the technical problems associated with doing post-production on that amount of material all at once. Yeah. And um, so we visit a vast number of customers doing this kind of work. And universally, they end up using a tool like Nuke in the middle to bring all this material together. They have a common set of problems around camera calibration, color correction, uh, stitching, review, uh, rotoscoping this kind of material. All of the standard things you want to do on a normal image just become that much harder. So what we've been showing here is a tech preview of our first attempts at uh, looking at solutions or workflow uh, solutions for all those bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been really exciting because we thought we knew a fair number of people doing it, but at a show like this, so many more people come out of the woodwork. You think, really, you're all doing it too. Brilliant. Um, and great feedback on the tools. So we have a huge amount of work to do. Um, but um, we love it because it's, um, it's a real Wild West scenario. No one knows, everyone's excited. No one knows how to do it. So we're all scrabbling for the best way to solve these problems. Well, really fun. 24 cameras. I mean, what is the challenge of that? Just uh, <laughs> um, I think, well, on a, from a production point of view, it's it's um, the rigs themselves are, are real problems um, or challenges is probably a better way of looking at it. Capturing that amount of data is a real problem. Um, and um, getting it into post is a real problem. Uh, and then from there on, it really is assembling it. So we're so used these days to, we use these days to be able to produce anything. And um, you go to the movie theater today, you watch a show, you know that if someone can imagine it, you can pretty much do it. We're, we're that good. And um, in this kind of new medium, we can't do that anymore. We're kind of stuck again. There's things which we just yet don't know how to do that we feel used to be easy and have somehow become really hard again. How do I, how do I composite CG and green screen elements into a 20 camera set? Up and do yeah. it at a reasonable time, cope with that amount of data, review it. It's, uh, it's brilliant fun. So it's sort of a new frontier in a way. It is, it is. Uh, it's a new frontier in every respect from storytelling, the technical side of production, delivery, post production. There's, there's nothing in there which uh, isn't huge. Um, but it's, I think it's brilliant, brilliant fun. It does sound like fun. Simon, thank you so much for stopping by. It's been, you know, a long show. Yeah. <laughs> I just appreciate you taking the time. So. Right. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Simon Robinson, The Foundry. Randy Altman with Post Perspective. See you soon.